opposition parties, the, the Islamic parties, they managed to capture one of the states in the power. They really started trying to implement Hulu, Islamic criminal law. Alright, so now, apparently, not only in Sarawak, but in the whole the Malaysia, most of the people have no idea about Hulu or Islamic criminal law. So they started interviewing two people, and I was, in my book form, I was trying to uh, analyze whatever I can gather from the newspaper. Because even when I asked my Ustad, my Ustad also had no idea about Hulu. Because he never actually come from a religious background at all, actually. It's just that he comes from a religious school, but so happened that when he came to our school, nobody wanted to teach the Islamic religious study. So he took it out more like Amadiara situations, you know, like just to help out. So if when I asked him more about Sharia, he said, seriously, I have no idea. Okay, even then, you know, we, we also study harsh religious law. But there are certain things from the books that I was a bit confused. I asked him to extend for this, I also have no idea, actually. I've never been there, and actually I was not even trained from this, actually. So, okay, fine, never mind. I was just like, going on with my journey. So, this thing about me, it's the, the discussion about Hudu was the one more so making me feel that I want, I must go to some university, study law. Because that was the only university in the whole world that can allow me to study the British law, I mean, the, 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 the normal law system, and the Sharia law. Because I realized that during from the newspaper coverage, Nobody knows about Islamic, uh, Islamic law that much. Most of the time, you, when, it, when they interview one particular person, somebody will say like this, and then when they interview the next guy, somebody will say something else, and when you read the two, what are they talking about? They confuse you even more. Right? And the worst thing was, nobody really in Malaysia at that point in time can really step forward and explain to us in a very uh, uh, clear manner what we do and Sharia is all about. So it, 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 it really caused something like uh, a little how I say, motivation in the little me that I must go to the Islamic University and study for it. I don't care if I will pass or not, but I know about Islamic law. That was what I had in mind. So, after the O-level, my family sent me to Australia studying um, foundation in medic medicine. Um, mm. Okay, I have no problem with that, except for the fact that my heart was, I really set my heart to be in Islamic University. Okay, I must go there. I wrote to them, seriously. From four or from five, you know those little kids eh, who really write using my handwriting. Those days we do not have computer, yeah, and send them many letters in some university about the enrollment process. And guess what? Those letters were never answered as a year. Yeah, so something for my I told myself, regardless, I must go to this university. So before I left for Australia, I told this one of the uh, the lay teacher in the uh, in, in, in my hometown. He was teaching me another. So I was telling him that look, do me a favor because he was the most religious among all the peninsular te um, teachers who sent to my hometown. So I said, this, the, the, we, we call the teacher always Jake. Jake, okay, do me a favor. I said, once my results are, do me a favor, apply for the local university on my behalf, okay, and make sure you put Islamic university as my choice. I have no other university I want to go to. If any university that want, I want to come back to Malaysia for, it will be Islamic university. Okay, so I entrusted him, and I went to Australia, study, and uh, well, the result was very good. After one semester, the, my O-level result came out. The O-level result came out, okay, one thing, of course, I performed well in all the papers, but the best story of the year was, I also scored A1 for my Islamic religious study. Not only an A1, but apparently it was the highest mark in the whole Asia. So the education minister actually sent, personally sent an email, I mean a letter, to our principals who were stand so proud of it and announced it in the school assembly. You know, we are for the first time in Malaysian history we have a I mean for Peninsula we have chances, I mean opportunity or occasions before where the non Muslim perform a in the exams for a religious study. But for the Borneo Island there was something unheard of before. Firstly, secondly, there was the first time we have the highest for the non Muslims. So he was very proudly announcing it and forgot it that he was the one who stopped Right, I was like, fine, that excuse him for that. I was not around actually in the first place. But the best thing was, um, that was saying in front of uh, every student during the assembly. And that actually reached a few of my cousin's ears, of course. And the things that reached my mom's ears, okay, and started having some relative getting on to pressure my mother. Are you sure you know what you are doing? Your son doesn't seem to be very firm now. Remember, we are very Christian, we were very Christian family. So your son seems to be an A1 
any time might be going to the other side now. Okay, how can you a a a a, you know, a genuine, authentic Christian score an A one highest mark in Malaysia for that? Okay, now that starts getting scary. Okay, uh, I was in Australia. My mom said that like uh, I mean, uh, very proud of me with the, the result I have, but you now start crying over the phone saying that you make sure you do not become a Muslim. Right, so now, to apply for the local university, you need to fill out the form. Yeah? So I called all the way from Australia to this particular J group. I said, remember what you promised me? So now is the time. Please fill in the forms for me. Submit it to the government. I must go to this other university. So you are asking me, okay, now, uh, the form says you have to identify five, five choices. Okay, so if you want to some university law as a first choice, fine. What about the others? I said, I don't want any other university, so fine. Even if they do not want to allow me to study uh, uh, law in Islamic university, then so long as I can go to Islamic university, it's fine. So fill out whatever subject that they offer in Islamic university. So this guy probably filled out a form, signed on my behalf, or they he spoke my signature. Okay, and submitted. Yeah. But that was in my Australia, so fine. Okay, nobody, even in my family, the knew about it. Okay, the form was submitted. Apparently he didn't stop there. He actually asked for whatever friends that he has in KL side, our uh, capital of Malaysia, who knows anybody from Islamic University. Okay, and he tried, they used whatever that they could around the election today. Okay, they really tried every single thing that they could to make sure somebody in Islamic University look at my power differently. Because you see, under the normal part of education system, my application would have been definitely thrown out. Okay, firstly, I have no religious study background. How can Islamic University accept me? Secondly, under the normal procedure, for those who are coming from Sabah, Sarawak, you will go to another center. And that center will definitely process applications and I have zero chance to go to Islamic University also. Okay, notwithstanding of whatever result I have. So then uh, somebody in Islamic University, we pick up a part and look at it and say, oh, well, this guy has the best religious study subject throughout the whole Malaysia. That is good enough for me to, to, to try to talk to somebody. So they managed to pull up my file, and you know, when they call this, during those days, Islamic University has a very high privilege because of the then deputy prime minister who was then the president of our Islamic University. So we actually, if Islamic University wants you, they will pull out the files before any other local university get it. So they will pull out the file, and we, I mean, selected students will then be called for an interview. During the interview, during our time, they will actually interview you from your akhlaq and from your religion. Okay, as in uh, akhlaq is one thing, and then with the religious part, they will usually ask the students to the very least recite what Quranic ayah in front of us from your memory. You fail that out, you go. You pass that, okay, the next thing they will take out some kitab, read now. Alright, okay, so I went, I mean, I was being, because of that, I was being selected for the interview. Me being me, knowing nothing about the interview. Okay, and you know when you were young, you never pulled up or anything. So I fought with my family to fly back all the way to uh, my hometown for the interview. Alright, um, of course, when I reached the interview venue, venue okay, they sent five um, you know, prominent professors to Camel Branch to that. Okay, then somebody told me that, are you replaced? I have other Muslim uh, candidates being called up for the interview as well. And then somebody was telling me, uh, you know, how are you going to perform the interview? Do you know what they were, they were doing in the interview? Oh, okay, you're supposed to recite the uh, Quran ayah from your memory, huh? Okay, and you're supposed to read the kitab, huh? Okay, I was like, okay, fine. Um, since I have came all the way, no harm to step in and cook it. You know, when you were young, you don't bother about it. It's like, if they offered me, how many like, if they don't offer me, never mind, I can go back and I still have my medicine study, so you know, nothing to lose. So I went into the medicine, I mean, the interview hall. You were seriously scary. Because they interviewed me for one hour to make sure whether, uh, you know, because they're supposed to check about the akhlaq of the students, you know. So, being a non Muslim, what can they teach for me? So just ask me, well, what do I think and everything. And they knew about my stories that I was studying in Australia and yeah. I really wanted to go to some university. Yeah. So they checked with me a lot. At that point in time, I already kind of, kind of um, interested in Islam. I just kept, keep telling myself, you must go to some university, see the Muslim in practice, then you confirm what you want to do now. Okay, so during the interview, the rest is issue out with me. I said, I told them, yep, yeah, that's what I want to do, but I will only do that after I study at the university, after I graduate from the university, because I do not want people to say, you want to take that as a privilege. You know, because people, I said, oh, because you are 
own blood, so the land should have been DNA to you and everything. So I said, I don't want, I don't want that kind of thing. Forget about it. So, um, fine. After the interview, the good thing was, they did ask me, can you, uh, by any chance, know any of the chronic ayah by memory? No. And somebody in the panel said, obviously, you could not, because now Muslims are not supposed to memorize. I'm not supposed to read in the first place the, the real uh, ayat, I mean the Arabic version of the Quran. Okay, so he has been reading the text here, I mean from the Malay language version. So it's good enough, really. So fine, then uh, they want to, one of the, I mean the, the admission of this representative, okay, actually want to give me the form already. Then somebody said, no, we cannot. Because this is something never practiced before. So they took out the form and kind of, I mean, I lost the, the uh, my, 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 my chance. So I went back to Australia, uh, 